This is Les Lye in the midst of a love-in located in the parliamentary washroom, Ottawa, the men's room, of course. For audition purposes, I'm going to ask some of the fellas to read excerpts from the wall. An imposing display of graffiti here. Abercrombie, you care to lead off? All right, Leslie. Here's one I kind of dig. Guy almost ran out of crayon. It's kind of lengthy. Lucy Bird Johnson Nugent won't allow Grandpa Linden to pick up the baby yet. At least not until the boy's ears are much stronger. Stan? Oh, that's very good, Ab. Um, let's see. Hmm, this is more appropriate. Military service may be hazardous to your health. All right, Billy. No, over here. Would you mind? Just read one of these slogans. Where? Oh, oh. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> it says here, Lady Godiva wore pasties. <laughs> oh, oh, my. What are pasties? Forget it. Flash. Mm, well, this is, this is kind of sick, but peculiarly Canadian. Laura Secord had sugar diabetes. Well, that's too much. Let's make it Fanny Farmer. Look, never mind the editorializing. Just read. Uh, Parker. Yep, howdy, Bob. I just wrote this one myself. Kind of a commercial plug for my employer. Pepperidge Farms is a communist front organization. Even their blueberry turnovers is red. All right. Here's, here's a familiar face, sir. You care to read something from the wall? Oh, oh yes, yes. I'd love to. It, it, it says here that the, the new leader of the opposition does not wear a toupee. He has a false scalp. Oh, hell, that's a gather. I imagine you would demand equal time, sir. Well, that's right. Am I, fellow Canadian? Yeah, this is a direct quote from the wall of the parliamentary washroom. Almost blew it. LBP is alive and well, but not in Canada. Good. Uh, pardon me, sir. You, uh, would you mind? Yes. Show me a milkman who wears high heels, and I'll show you a dairy queen. Oh, brother. Uh, you, sir. Uh, uh, yes, yeah, sir, with pleasure. I... I like this example of the art of graffiti. Glenn, uh, Van Clyburn uses a player piano. Mm -hmm. Look, could we speed it up? Just pass the mic and um, and read your piece. Next. Can a 50-year-old man find happiness with a 12-year-old bottle of scotch? <laughs> Did you ever think that clocks might be watching you? Ah, shucks, man, I'm... I'm number three, and I don't try at all. Brushing your teeth rattles your brain, and soap rots your skin, and don't you forget it. Ah, uh, wait a minute, uh, here, here. Carter Trent is a dirty ectomorph. Yeah, ban the bomb. Save the world for conventional warfare. Twiggy is alive and well in a broom closet in Liverpool. If God had meant us to have fiberglass boats, he would have made fiberglass trees. Well, for scrim's sake, yet it says here, the little old lady in the Casabajua area watches at the Dean the Martin show, but only for medicinal purposes. Stan Laurel is alive and is playing the part of Premier Alexei Korsigan of the USSR. Hey, Watson, uh, what's it? Chastity. Chastity is his, his own punishment. It's better to have bad breath than none at all. Whist. See Jean Russell and Twiggy starring in the film version of The Odd Copper. All right, well, look, we've got a, one more. Actually, I just wanted to get in a plug for my latest Swedish movie. It's very new and very radical. The actors are all fully clothed but the audience is in the nude. Well, look, you shorten it down to a sentence, Mr. Bergman, and write it in that space over the sink, okay? Thanks very much, fellas. This is Les Lye wrapping things up from the parliamentary washroom. Looking for a voice? You've come to the right place. My name is Les Lye, and all the voices you'll hear in the tape ahead belong to me. Many are original, a few suggested by others, and some 
more or less identifiable impersonations. Rather than read the telephone book, I've selected some representative material from my voluminous gag files to add a certain flavor. First, I'd like you to meet a host of characters who appear regularly on my radio program. Hi. Hi there, I'm Abercrombie. I'm born and raised in the town of Osqueegee, Saskatchewan, the smallest town in the West. How small? How small? I'll tell you how small. I phoned home at Christmas and the area code was busy. My name is Seth Yancey, and I'm old. How old? I'll tell you how old. I'll tell you, son, I'm so old, I remember absorbing senior. I'm Flash Student Jelly. Yeah, uh, they call me the Iconoclast. You, you show me a guy who gets breakfast in bed, and, and I'll show you a guy who's in hospital. Well, my, my name is Billy Butter, William. And, uh, oh, 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 wait, 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 no, no, look, I'm, I'm on a strict diet. Uh, better make that skim milk of magnesia. I'm Bernice Wine, one-time television booth girl at CJOH, FM radio star, and stand-up comedian at church halls throughout the Ottawa Valley. My old husband, Rube, is, is still in there trying. Yeah, he gets up for health exercises every morning. No, 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 he, he don't do them. That big blonde next door does. No. My, my name is Morley. Uh, Ottawa's number one loser. Well, last week, I phoned dial a prayer and they hung up on me. Yeah, how are you? My name's Hicks. Yeah. I'm from a little uh, town up the valley there. We hired our first meter maid uh, last month. Worked out so good town council's thinking of installing a parking meter or two. Uh, oh, oh, this is my turn. My, my name is, um, wait a minute. No, that couldn't be. No, I got it right here in my, my overcoat. This is my suit coat. <laughs> Inside pocket. There, there's the label. My name is Neighborhood Services. No, that doesn't sound right. You, are, you know, whiskey improves with age. Yeah, the older I get, the better I like it. Hi. My name is uh, Bruce Rocky Sprang, young Canadian poet, novelist. <laughs> I've often wondered, when, when a nudist dies, uh, do they notify his next of skin? <laughs> oh, gee. A.C. Ducey, a sports reporter, commentator, played by Lane, broadcaster, and part-time banana bicycle seat salesman, with the tennis scores from the Reno Club, 8-6, 4-6, 6-love, and 7-5. David Dinkley here with the news. The Red Chinese Space Program has suffered several setbacks recently. Peking is determined to beat both Russia and the States to Mars, but their astronauts keep falling off the kite. My name is Fred Freebus. Um, I suffered through a weird, weird childhood. Oh, yes, one early traumatic shock I never recovered from. I was breastfed on falsies. Well, there are, there are some of the originals now for the dialects and accents. I know a Chinese proverb say, if we have a green mint eye, it will be which means a girl who wears hot pants never get cold shoulder. I, I heard a rather, rather good definition in the parliamentary restaurant the other day. There's a reactionary is, is a liberal who, who just got mugged under the Mackenzie King Bridge. That's a small L, liberal, you know. <laughs> Aye, laddie, the truth.
trouble with marijuana is that a whole generation of young people is coming up who never experienced a hangover. <laughs> Show me a man who continually kisses the Blarney Stone, and I'll show you a man with a serious sex problem. Uh, Dr. Rubin uh, says there is uh, uh, no need to fear sex after uh, a heart attack. Uh, well, that's true, but uh, uh, you should probably wait 15 or 20 minutes. Tell sir, what it is, uh, what I have invented is a portable electric blanket. Portable, yeah, sure. For people who walk in their sleep. Oh, that there Hubert Humphrey is running so fast, it reminds me of a man reading Playboy magazine with his wife turning the pages. Niegoro Vatapravsk, Minsk, Polsk, Dominsk, Prokov, Prodidien, Tapolatinsk. Which means that word is an umbrella if your boots leak. Well, that's a fair sampler. In conclusion, a few impersonations. Shucks, it's awfully lonely up here in the saddle, especially since my old horse died. Yeah. I'd say more, but it hurts. My teeth are locked shut. Ah, yes, W.C. Fritos. Ah, yes, D. Godfrey Daniel, I'm going to have to give up drinking or get my knees half so Do you? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, Scarlet, yeah, I just don't give a damn. Well, as, 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 as far as I'm concerned, not now that the 18-year-olds have the vote, there are, there, there are three major issues. The liberal party must face to win that teenage vote, unemployment, inflation, and acne. Well, that's, uh, what will I do when I retire? A good book, a glass of warm milk, and then off to Never Neverland. My, my jammies are made out of an old red ant. <laughs> This is Billy Graham reminding you that the Lord loveth a cheerful giver, but he'll also accept from a grouch. They say that I had described Jacqueline Suzanne on the Johnny Carson show as looking like a, a truck driver in drag. Well, it is true, but I have since apologized to every truck driver I meet. Okay, there are um, a few. There are more, but uh, that's, a, that's a fair sampler. Hello there, Les Sly for Billings Bridge Plaza. Now, we're all very proud to salute the 200th birthday of Bradish Billings with a terrific two-day party, the greatest sidewalk sale ever. This Thursday and Friday, incredible savings, bargains galore, there are 200 tables. Come and join the celebration. Bring the entire family to Billings Bridge Plaza, Thursday and Friday, the greatest sidewalk sale of the year. Now, special message from the Bradish Billings. It's okay, Brad. No, cool it. Hello there, Les Lye for Billings Bridge Plaza. We're all very proud to salute the 200th birthday of Bradish Billings with a terrific two-day party, the greatest sidewalk sale ever. Today and tomorrow, Billings Bridge Plaza. Incredible savings, bargains galore. There are 200 tables. Come and join the celebration. Bring the entire family to Billings Bridge Plaza today and tomorrow, the greatest sidewalk sale of the year. Now, a special message from the Bradish Billings. Listen, officer. No, I was... it's okay. It's okay, Brad. Cool. 
special message from the Bradish Billings. I, I, I'm alone. Never mind. Forget it. I'm telling you. It's all over. Uh, Brad, maybe next year. Uh, hurry, hurry, hurry. Let's live for Billings Bridge Plaza. Celebrating Bradish Billings' 200th birthday. What a party. The greatest sidewalk sale ever. It was in 18 hot 20 Hold, hold it, sir. Just a moment. Two days only, this Thursday and Friday at Billings Bridge Plaza. 200 tables, 99 places to shop. Bargains galore. Bring the whole family to the biggest sidewalk sale of the year. Thursday and Friday at Billings Bridge Plaza. My special guest today, the Bradish Billings. Yeah, oh, well, now he's a young fellow. What? I was... Uh, that? We're out of time. Oh, Sorry, Brad. Hmm? Hurry, hurry, hurry. Less alive for Billings Bridge Plaza. Celebrating Bradish Billings' 200th birthday. What a party. The greatest sidewalk sale ever. There was an 18 hour oh, Hold it, sir. Just a moment. Two days only, today and tomorrow, at Billings Bridge Plaza. 200 tables, 99 places to shop. Bargains galore. Bring the whole family to the biggest sidewalk sale of the year, today and tomorrow, at Billings Bridge Plaza. My special guest today, the Bradish Billings. When I was a young Jasper... What? I, uh, What's that? We're out of time. Let go. Sorry, Brad. Well, when I was a young chap, I Wait, arrived what's that? in... Well, we're out of time. What? Sorry, Brad. Oh, for... Philosopher Floyd Schwein once said, you can't buy happiness. Wrong. You can buy almost anything at Billingsbridge Plaza. Oh, and those day-to-day -day bargains can mean a lot of smiles. Hence, you bought happiness. Good thinking, Ab. You want to talk variety? 99 stores. True. But you know, Ab, the most important, the most talked about new feature at Billingsbridge Plaza is that sensational covered overpass from the O.C. Transpo Terminal. Weather's always ideal, no rain, sleet, snow. As someone once said, the sun always shines at Billingsbridge Plaza. Floyd Schwann. No, no, me. Two hundred years ago, pioneer tradesman Bradish Billings said, If you give them what they want, they'll always come back for more. The Billingsbridge shopkeepers continue the tradition with friendly personal service. Hundreds of thousands of customers flock to the 99 stores year-round for the widest variety and the best prices in town. Don't forget the new upper-level mall expansion, that convenient OC Transpo overpass, and free parking for over 2,000 cars at Billings Bridge Plaza. One of Mr. Billings' partners said, buy expensive, sell cheap. Oh, Mr. Bridge. No, 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 Fred Plaza. Nineteen fifty-two. A great year. Patty Page was singing. I went to your wedding. While you were getting your divorce app. A terrific year less for Billings Bridge Plaza, too. The year they opened. Yeah. This is the 32nd anniversary sale. This Wednesday through the 20th, and the big news Billings Bucks are back. Right. You can stretch your shopping dollars with 1952 style prices throughout Billings Bridge Plaza. Hey, where do I get my Billings Bucks? Wednesday night's newspaper sale continues through the 20th. Patty Page still mine? I don't know. No. Ho, ho, ho. Shop at Billingsbridge Plaza. Oh, right, old timer. Oh. That time of year again, Ab. When we do all our Christmas shopping at Billingsbridge Plaza. Can't miss 120 stores. Widest selection of goods anywhere. From carp to Constantinople. You want to talk bargains? Everything under the sun. Best prices in town. It's a season to be jolly and why? Shop at Billingsbridge Plaza now till Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, you got it, Mr. Claus. You're not Santa. He isn't? I'm Grandfather Billings. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Uh, beard fooled me. Constantinople? Join us all at Billings Plaza. Who are they, Ab? The Santa Claus trio. I hired them. To advertise the joys of Christmas shopping at Billings Bridge Plaza? You got it, Leslie. Might work. Now, what can we tell shoppers they don't already know? 120 stores, wide a selection of bargains from Carp to Cape Horn. They know that. Best prices, as many toys as Santa's workshop. Everybody digs that. Yes, there's nothing new we can say about Christmas shopping at Billings Bridge Plaza. Santa Claus trio? Trio of his elves. Billings... Bridget! Bridget? 
Yeah, a man that is certainly no stranger to anybody here in the National Capital Region. It's a pleasure and an honor to have on the program Les Lai. Oh, Cam, you're just saying that because I'm here. No, no, I say that because I'm sincere about that. It's kind of silly if you did if I wasn't here. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Les? Good to have you on the just program. Great. Nice to talk with uh, someone whose voice is as distinctive as mine. <laughs> <laughs> and it's true, Cam. That's right. Boy, you've been around a long time. Oh. At CJOH for what? Since they opened a the door, I guess, huh? Almost, yes. Um, being a freelance uh, performer for a long time, although at that time I was on staff with a radio station, uh, which I believe is still in operation here in town. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't want to start no, everybody no, tuning no, the dial all of it either. No, no, no. The, uh, a great number of us turned up at uh, CJOH's doors, uh, just looking to see if there was any work, and sure enough, I wound up with Bill Luxton uh, in the first month or two, doing a couple little uh, twenty buck a shot uh, interviews, and that's how our partnership began. And you're still with him, do doing Willie and Floyd. How many well, years have you been at that? That started in '66, just yeah. before Color came in. That's how I can remember. Really? We did black and white for half a season, and then Color came in, and uh, seventeen years. Mm, yeah, give or take a few years. Actually, we were off the air for a couple of years in the early 70s and uh, came back. Not usual. Um, when I watch that show, William Floyd, though, you sound like and you look like you're having such a blast yourself. You sure do. You, you, I mean, it's, is it as unstructured as it seems? I, I notice there are a lot of ad libs. And yes, a lot except of for the last season, uh, Cam, uh, which was a year ago. We did a 13-week series, which were, was carefully... This wasn't my idea, although I... I was uh, agreeable to trying it out. It was a half-hour situation comedy almost, and every word was scripted because the director was taking his shots according to the script, so we couldn't ad-lib our usual way around mm -hmm. things. And it, um, it worked to a degree, but uh, we're going back into production, I understand. In fact, I know. And we'll, I think we'll probably combine both aspects. We'll leave it a little looser this time around. Just have some a direction, a thumbnail sketch of what you exactly. want to do. Yeah. You like working like that? You like working free and easy that way? Yeah, Bill and I, uh, like a lot of comedy teams, have worked together so long that you begin to know where the other guy's going. You look at his face and you know exactly what he's uh, thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, uh, we, well, in the old days, we had a gag that we were going to, and I know a lot of people work this way, we're not alone. Um, it's getting there that's half the fun. <laughs> and uh, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, all along the way, uh, luckily we, we pre-taped, of course, and everything is pre-taped in television now, and we'd, we'd go out of our way to try to throw the other guy, and that, that would add a little spice to it. You're also involved in a lot of the kids' programs at CJOH. And one of them in particular, you can't do that on television, I see. That was one of the first programs I ever had on the TV set when I was here in Ottawa I mean, this past summer. And I really got a kick out of it. It uh, reminded me a lot of the old laugh-in. Exactly. From the exactly. There's no doubt that that's one of the basic uh, similarities. It was a format that I always enjoyed, though. You know, the fast pace, the fast skits, the moving in and out. Funny you mention that, Cam. I've had a feeling that they should revive uh, either revive laugh in or something similar. I think TV's ready. Besides, uh, well, our kids show is definitely directed to kids, and as you probably know, it's been sold to the states and Nickelodeon, the children's network in the states. Yeah, maybe you can explain that to people about that. We're, we're not really familiar with Nickelodeon, the the network from the United States. Well, is that a pay TV service down there? Yes, and it is. It is made up solely of children's programs. In other words, seven o'clock in the morning or whenever you can turn that channel on and you'll see nothing but kids shows hmm. cartoons leave it to beaver whatever i'm sure they have to delve into the old uh, archives to dig up some shows because they're filling uh, a schedule that runs from the seven till late evening all right with nothing but kids shows well how does you can't do that on television shape up ratings wise down there well he said blushing modestly because <laughs> i'm part of the show um it's their most popular show by far really? by far there's no comparison well good for you and uh, how many people are we talking about hard and fast numbers well how many millions would that be a couple of million probably apparently they have a, a possible audience of about seven or eight million or close to ten now i guess really and um well a very quick story roger price who was the mastermind behind same roger is a british producer director who came to uh, our town on the invitation of bryn matthews of cjoh signed a contract and has been working there for the last three or four years He's the father of the show. He did a show very much like it in England, 
And I remember him approaching me and asking me if I'd be interested in doing the adult role, or roles, I should say, on the show. The adults are all the villains, of course, right. and uh, teachers. And, but the cassette that he showed me was the British show, and it was very good. I wanted to work with him right away. But this guy's got it. Roger's probably a 40, 41 now, but he was in his late 30s then, kid. And uh, <laughs> I was most impressed. But afterwards, I said, Roger, the adult on that British show is black, He's about 25. He's a ballet dancer. I said, come on, are you serious? He said, no, no, no. I want an adult. I want you to do it if you're willing. Oh, of course I am. And the rest is history. Uh, I've really enjoyed because he gives you a nice um, um, wide area to work in. He suggests the character, and you see the lines, and then he said, you work on it. It's whatever you want to do. Isn't sure. that great, you know, yeah. that people respect you that much to, to give you that freedom? It's the way he works. Yeah. And, uh, Does he do that with the kids, too, uh, or are their lines pretty a, well? Well, there's a tighter control, of course, because um, the kids are uh, truly amateurs, right out of uh, schools. In fact, Roger went leaned a little backwards in that he didn't really want any kids who'd had drama training. Why? He, well, partly because he wanted to mold them himself. He felt that he'd have to unlearn some things for television if they'd been studying, which they would have been, for stage. So... Most, if not all, of those kids, and there were, uh, he, uh, I understand, auditioned about a thousand kids in the beginning, mm. and uh, some of them are just moose. Christine McGlade is just sensational. The girl is incredible, a natural, who walked into that studio, had never seen a TV camera before, and was right at home immediately. Our guest this morning on CJSB is Les Sly from CJOH TV and the Nickelodeon Network in the United States. From you can't do that. I'd like to hear that. It doesn't mean me that and uh, 37 cents will get you a coffee in the CJOH <laughs> lunchroom, but, well, that's not quite true, but uh, the residuals aren't what they should be. One of the things I'm impressed with here talking with you, Les, is that you're a man who's been in the business a long time, probably all your life, but you're still talking about present day and what you want to do in the future. You're not one of those men that's been around for a while who really kind of delves into the past, really wallows in that, saying, boy, it was great way back when, it was super way back when, and you're, you're really not dating yourself that way, you're keeping yourself very current. Is that something you work at? Not really, Cam, but I think that I'm probably somewhere in between. I could sit and chat with you about the good old days, and I love talking about the good old days, but usually with contemporaries, I realize that the young people today really aren't that concerned. Oh, that's kind of interesting, I suppose. But there are more important things to talk about. And I think working on kids' shows really does make a difference. And working with kids as I do, they really either keep me young or they're going to put me in a premature grave. But as I say, I don't mind talking uh, about uh, the old days because you're right. I go back to 1940, right after the war, 47. I went into the Academy of Radio Arts, which was a, a school in Toronto, a very good school, by the way. They had such instructors as Lister Sinclair, Andrew Allen, Maver Moore, some of them still alive and kicking and, uh, and still deeply involved in broadcasting, Steve Brody. And it was that. It was a very good school, one year, and uh, the graduate... The, the honor graduate in the year before I attended was Fred Davis. No kidding. And Fred ended up here in Ottawa, and we worked hmm. together at, at that same local station, <laughs> which I'm not sure is still on the air. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope it now is. they love to hear that. <laughs> but it's true. Yeah, well, you sound like you really have a good time, too. And you were talking uh, before we got on the air here how uh, this building, I mentioned that it took up your old parking lot. You said, oh, it was much more than a parking oh, lot. Oh, it was a park. Beautiful grass and benches and one scotch pine just about in the center of that. And people driving by will remember. And that was Ernie Bushnell's tree. Mm. Ernie's office at the...